please that you have a nostalgia. Do you have a nostalgia? Do you have the article? This is the moment of truth. If I say no, Marion will become my sworn enemy forever. But at least it'll get me into Louise's good books. Then again, I say yes, Marion will forever be in my debt. Louise will hate me as much as ever, but I'll have an ally. What should I do? I literally just said this. Well, do you have well, do you have the article or not? Claim you wrote the article, give the article to Marion. Here's Marion's article. Sorry it took so long to find it. Finally, we can all get on with our lives. Hmm. Thank you, Nostalgia. I really appreciate that. Isn't it great that she asked us to proofread it? Otherwise, like, she'd be so in the shitter. Don't thank her yet. This article might still be crap. Or still might be crap. I don't care what she thinks. I owe you one. Big time. Oh, that's okay. It's the least I could do. Listen, Nostalgia. I'm, I'm sorry for... My god, this is actually readable. And I thought Marion was completely useless. Oof. I'm so glad she likes it. I just helped the competition. Did I do the right thing? Yes! For fuck's sake, I did the right thing. I made a mistake. I own Marion now. I did the right thing. Dude, it's like... I don't know. I didn't lie and I didn't cheat. I did what was most moral. Yes! Do I have to fucking select, like, did I do the right thing over and over again? I won't play any games that puts my values on the line. Good. Great job, Marion. Keep it up and you'll be made permanent. As for you, Nostalgia, you've been outrun pretty fast. Do something about it, or get packing your bags. Sorry about that, Nostalgia. Great, so I do the right thing and I still get burned. You really saved my ass, Nostalgia. It's okay, Marion. You would have done the same for me. No, she wouldn't have. Yeah, but how can I ever repay you? Don't mention it. Buy me a drink. I take credit cards. Be straight with me. Alright, hard-hitting question time. Be straight with me. I just want you to be honest, that's all. Want you to be honest with me? Honest? Yeah, I have to work on that. I know. Wait, I know what I can do for you. On account of me being French and you being American. Oh, she's French? I didn't know that. There is one thing I can teach you. It's to tell me how to dress, I swear to God. Hmm, this might actually be of some use to me. Hmm. I'll show you how to dress. Oof. <laughs> I can't. You clearly need guidance. What the fuck am I wearing that, like, I look so shit? Are you kidding me? I'm 100% serious. Follow me. I promise you won't regret it. Alright. Sure. This is such bullshit. I cannot believe I predicted that. Grand Boulevard. <laughs> such bullshit. I can't even believe this nonsense. What are we doing here? This is where I buy my clothes. Marion, don't take this the wrong way. But you have your own style, and I have mine. We're different. I don't know if I should take your advice. Hmm. Oh... You, you think the person in front of you is the real me? Oh. Yes? It's not. Not at all. I dress like this on purpose. Look, what does fashion represent for you? It's a pain in the ass. It's art. It's art. It really is. It's a pain in the ass, too, but it's art. Fashion is an art form. It's very important to me. <laughs> she liked that. Well, if that's good, I don't care. Exactly, Nostalgia. I saw that the moment we met. But you don't use it to your advantage like I do. Is this like a Legally Blonde the Musical moment? Let me explain. A great lady called Mar Marilyn Monroe- I almost butchered her name, I'm sorry. A great lady called Marilyn Monroe once said, Give the girl the right shoes and she can conquer the world. Do you actually believe that? Of course I do. Truer words were never spoken. She really believes that. And it's kind of sweet. Do you want to know why Marilyn's words are my motto? Yeah, sure. No, not really. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, not really. I'm so rude. Yes, tell me. Clothes are not necessarily a reflection of who you are. They're tools to get you what you want. 
Oh, fuck. I really should start taking that advice to heart. Shoes, dresses, jeans, there's a purpose for everything. You dress differently depending on who you're with. Thanks to fashion, people don't need to see who you are. They'll see you however you'll want them to see you. That seems... So you want people to think you're still a country girl? In a way, yes. Look at my top, my hair, my jeans. Why do you think I dress so casually? Oh, okay. Alright, good, good, good. So this is... T well, I mean, no. I, I really need to, like, throw away other stuff from my well, wardrobe. I should go shopping. It makes you look pretty. You want people to pity you? Um, I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like if I say you want people to pity you, it's going to be offensive and I don't want to offend her. It makes you look, it makes you look pretty. I feel like that's going to upset her. It gives you a natural beauty, I suppose. And it really suits your shape. <laughs> no, Nostalgia, you're totally wrong. Then why? I dress like this to make people feel comfortable. Not too hot, not too strict, not too crazy, not, nor too chic. You see, I want Louise to like me. What? How would that make Louise like you? Louise needs to feel superior, so she can't be outdressed. Pretty smart. Maybe I should ask for some advice after all. Ask her how you should dress, or don't. No. I'm here for it. Tell me how to dress. Hopefully she likes me enough. So, Marion, how do you think I should dress? And be honest. Oh, Marion likes me enough. That's good. I know Vince isn't going to like me at all. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to show you. Oh, she actually did take me shopping. That's nice. This is a cute little souvenir. I'm here for this. Clothes are like costumes. They help you reinvent yourself. Use fashion for your benefit. It's an instrument of control. You're in control, huh? Is that why you've been lying to me? Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, but I was wrong. Really, I was wrong about you. I thought you were a selfish overachiever. I felt threatened and I acted like a total cow. You took the words right out of my mouth. So, what do you say we make peace? Yes, and I don't trust you yet. Sure. I'm gonna trust people way too easily. Okay, I'll forget hearing you call me a gullible idiot. Hmm. Believe me, I'm the idiot for ever thinking that. Do you know what we should do? We should make a pact. Oh god, a pact? We both want the same permanent job, right? Well, not necessarily. So let's compete, but this time we play it fair. Okay, may the best dressed writer win. I'm glad we're finally on the same page. See you soon. Maybe helping her wasn't such a bad idea after all. Gosh, I'm running late. I have to get ready for the opera. Oh fuck, I have to see Vince. This sucks. Now I have to get on my best, like, weird attempt at a Transylvanian voice. Opera Gagné. This is the place. I hope Vincent is gonna show up. I don't want him to show up. I feel silly waiting here all alone in a cocktail dress. Hello, gorgeous. Oh, fuck yeah, TJ! TJ, what are you doing here? Just passing by. What are you doing here in that dress? I'm meeting someone. Uh, for a work thing. <laughs> well, you sure look the part. I'm meeting Vincent Carm, you know, the CEO of Carm International. I know who he is. Is he a vampire? Have you met him? Is he a vampire? Is he actually a vampire from the Dark Ages? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. He has a pretty bad reputation. Vincent Carm is like the big bad wolf. He made a fortune in the television ad he made a fortune in television and advertising. And now he's branching out in all directions. Hot couture, cuisine, movies, publishing, you name it. Okay, he's an entrepreneur, but that doesn't make him bad. 
Vincent isn't just an entrepreneur. Um, he isn't just an entrepreneur. He's a collector. He likes to own things and people. Beware of him. Own people? What does he collect? He won't own me. Own people? That's crazy. How could he possibly own people? He helps them and they become beholden to him forever. He is a master manipulator. Do not believe a word he says. Oh, great. I'm already on his bad side. I told him I didn't like his room. <laughs> like, damn. Listen, I have to run. Remember what I told you, nostalgia. Maybe I should just leave before Vincent. There she is. All dressed up and ready to ravish. Ew! Mr. Carm, I... Vincent, are you ready for the experience of a lifetime? Are you ready to revel in the magnificence of Faust? We have the place to ourselves, so follow me. Excellent. I'm about to be murdered. Let's enter the opera. Ooh. Opera Garnier. Opera Garnier is even more beautiful on the inside. Extraordinary Nisipa. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm sorry. This is one of my favorite places in Paris. Especially when it's empty. It's so peaceful. Why are we alone? This is a rehearsal, and since I am producing this opera, I can come watch as often as I please. Remember what TJ said. Do not take this man at his word. So, Miss Princess, have you ever heard of Faust? Of course. Who's Faust? Yeah, of course. I have actually read, like, Faust. It's a cautionary tale about temptation and desire. Mm -hmm. You know it well. Maybe I should have hired you to direct. Just because I know it doesn't mean I should direct it. You crazy? Faust is one of the most played operas in Paris. Everybody's seen it, but few people actually understand it. An old man becomes young again to correct his life's errors. He finally experiences love and lust. But he plays the ultimate price. Doesn't he sign his soul away to the devil or something? I, I thought the focus was on selling one's soul to the devil. Oh, I was right. Hey! Not at all. That's a mere storyteller's artifice. What would you have done in Faust's position? Sell my soul, no question. Resist temptation, resist temptation. I'm not selling my soul. I would have stood by my life choices and said no. He didn't like that. Well, I'm not going to sell my soul to the devil. I'm sorry that you disagree. A sad motto. Are you as straight in all of your endeavors? I love how he's like upset and doesn't like the fact that I wouldn't sell my soul. He would have liked that I would sell my soul. Maybe the next time I play this, I'll actually sell my soul. What if I told you I could give you anything you wished for? I hope the devil in Faust puts his case more convincingly. <laughs> oh my god! Ha, <laughs> well put. And very true. Speaking of the devil, there is something you should know. Your employer, Raphael Laurent, is rather like Faust. He will lie and cheat and steal to get whatever he wants. And I know for a fact he's been lying to you, mademoiselle. How so? You're the liar. How so? Pretty sure he's not going to tell me anything because I've been, like, doing nothing but pissing him off. Okay, Vincent. Enough allegations and innuendos. Just tell me. Where would I be without my allegations and innuendos? Last month, a very old letter went up for sale. A lost piece of Heloise's correspondence with her husband. I tried to buy the letter, but Mr. Laurent beat me to it. And I've now learned why he was so intent on beating me. I thought he, I was about to say berating. The letter holds a powerful secret. It reveals the location of something unique and valuable. And Mr. Laurent will do anything to get his hands on it. Even if that means lying to you and putting you in danger. None of that is true. It sounds plausible. I feel like I'm in danger. I feel like I'm in danger. 
Yeah, I feel like I'm in danger. Absolutely. 100%. Vincent is not a man to antagonize. Maybe I should just pretend to believe him. No, I believe him, honestly. I, I, I feel like I should have never come to Paris. Is that why you invited me here? <laughs> no, of course not. As I said last night, I have an offer to make. I told you, I already have a job at City of Love. Please, Miss Princess, spare me the morality. I'll come to you in kindness bearing my heart on a tray. Turn your back on Mr. Laurent, crack this secret for me. And I'll cover you in riches. I will never work for you. This is tempting. Why me? Why? Why me? Why is everyone bothering me? Why me? Can't you just buy someone else's soul? <laughs> I could, but I'm not interested in anyone else's soul. Only you can crack the secret. Raphael and I both know that. Who the hell am I that I know this, like, that they know that I'll be able to crack the secret? But since we're at the opera and the decor is right, I'd like to tell you a little story. This man is infatigable. He literally never gives up. There was a young man, raised in a tasteless, boring world. He was sensitive and delicate. He liked colors and shapes. He was good with his hands, and he liked making things. He just needed someone to reach out and help him. Let me guess, you helped him? Get to the point. And then came Vincent in his bright, shining armor, right? Well, I favored the three-piece suit, but that's about right. I sensed his talent. I pulled him out of the gutter. I saw him for what he truly was, a diamond in the rough. Feels like I've heard the story before. That was three years ago in Dreary, Ohio. Is he talking about TJ? Now the young man has his own hot couture line. Indeed, little TJ has become the toast of the town. TJ? Working for Vincent? His success story could be your success story. It's time to make up your mind. The show is about to begin. Damn. J. Man locked a souvenir of going shopping with Marion. So episode four. We completed it. Now on to episode five.